In an introductory maths cast on eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we introduced the idea of an eigenvector V of a matrix A. V is a vector which, when multiplied by A, simply gets scaled, changed in length, but maintains its direction. It is not rotated at all. Such a V is known as an eigenvector of A, and the scaling factor, here I've called it lambda, is an eigenvalue of A. We would say that V is an eigenvector of A with associated eigenvalue lambda. In this context, it's necessary that A be a square matrix, 2 by 2, 3 by 3, or in general, n by n. Can you see why, I wonder? In order for V to just be scaled, it must remain in the same dimension. It must simply be itself multiplied by some number. A three-dimensional vector will remain three-dimensional. A two-dimensional vector will remain two-dimensional. If A was not a square matrix, it would change the dimension of V. That's not allowed. We can't have scaling in that situation. And so A must be square. What I want to do here is to discuss how we might calculate the values of lambda if we know the matrix A. I'll talk about calculating the V's elsewhere, as that's a slightly longer process. The first thing I'm going to do is to rearrange this equation to have a zero vector on the right-hand side. I'll do that now. I've just taken the lambda V over to the left-hand side, but because I want the thing multiplying the V to be a matrix, I've interceded with a unit matrix between the lambda and the V. In the n by n case, that's an n by n unit matrix, with ones down its diagonal and zeros elsewhere. On the right-hand side, there is now a zero vector. If you've watched my presentations on linear dependence and independence, you will have seen an equation with this form before. The letters were a bit different, but it was still this kind of structure, an equation of the following kind. It doesn't matter, actually, if you haven't watched those presentations. The point is that we have matrix times vector equals zero, and we're hoping that there will be some non-trivial solution for the vector. That is, that it's not all zeros for its components. If that is to be the case, then there is a condition that the matrix A must satisfy. In the case of the equation I've just written, it is simply that the determinant of A must be zero. I've written that here. But for our eigenvalue the equation, the matrix on the left is not A, but A minus lambda I. So it's that matrix, A minus lambda I, whose determinant must be zero, in order that there are non-trivial versions of the vector V. So we've got our equation, det A minus lambda I equals zero. If the matrix A is known, we can work out that determinant. It will give us a left-hand side as a function of lambda, the zero on the right. In fact, it will give us a polynomial in lambda on the left. For an n by n matrix A, the polynomial will be nth degree. In principle, that could be quite hard to solve. But we're going to look at 2 by 2 here. That means our polynomial will be quadratic, so we'll always be able to solve it. Let's now move on and look at an actual case with some numbers for the matrix. I'll choose a 2 by 2 matrix A. I'll do this on the next page. OK, here's our matrix. I've made this up in advance and checked already that the eigenvalues will come out to be quite nice numbers, so that we don't get in too much of a mess with square roots and the quadratic formula. Let's write down the eigenvalue equation. We need the debt of A minus lambda I to be zero. So we'd better work out what is A minus lambda I. I'm now writing out the unit matrix I explicitly as the diagonal matrix with ones and zeros. I'm going to simplify this expression by collecting the individual components as follows. We get a matrix with the lambdas now appearing in the diagonal terms. We've got to take the determinant of this matrix and set it equal to zero. Let's do that now. There's the determinant. Let's expand it. We simply need 6 minus lambda times negative 11 minus lambda subtract negative 4 times 13. Let's expand out the brackets. Come. 
equals to something like that. So in the end, simplifying to lambda squared plus 5 lambda, and we've got 52 subtract 66, that's negative 14, and we've got to set this equal to 0. As I said, I chose the numbers in advance so that this would work out nicely. So it might not come as a surprise to you that this left-hand side factorizes. We have lambda plus 7 times lambda minus 2 equals 0. That gives us two solutions. Lambda equals 2 and negative 7. We've found the eigenvalues of our matrix. There were two of them. There were two of them because we had a quadratic equation to solve. In the case of an n by n matrix, we would have an nth degree polynomial to solve, so we would expect n eigenvalues. Of course, some of them might be identical, as can also be the case with a quadratic equation. In fact, it is even possible for eigenvalues to come out complex. That could have happened if our quadratic equation here had complex roots. There's nothing wrong with complex eigenvalues, but it does mean that we have to reinterpret our geometric approach to what an eigenvalue means. Multiplying by a complex number necessarily has the effect of rotating a vector. That's another story, and we'll stick to, to real eigenvalues for the moment. Let's just return now before we finish and have a look at our eigenvalue equation again. We've taken a 2 by 2 matrix A and we've managed to calculate the values lambda and found there were two of them. Of course, that's only part of the process. It remains still to find out what are the eigenvectors associated with those two different lambdas. We'll do that in another presentation. Once we can do this fluently for 2 by 2 matrices, we'll move on and do some work with 3 by 3 ones as well. Again, that's for another time.